Let's close our eyes as we raise up our two hands to the Lord. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. gathering of your children here. We we'll give you praise, O oh Lord. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for opening our understanding. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. I prophesy upon your life now that any humiliation, any disgrace, the enemy is bringing your way shall become your ladder to honor. In the name of Jesus. Anything negative that has get crash into anybody's lives, I order you to depart now. In the name of Jesus. Whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, whether it is convenient for your own enemies or not, you must arise. You must shine. You must arise. You must shine. In the name of Jesus. Your destiny will explode. With color and grace. In the name of Jesus. And I cover you and everything that belongs to you with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Last week, 
How many of you were here last week? Those who were here last week, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Last week, we began to look at a topic, choosing your life partner. And, and I'm sure you remember most of what we said. But for the benefit of those who are just joining us today, they are just coming, we'll just do a short recap before we now move on very quickly into what we need to talk about today. Praise the Lord. Choosing your life partner. And you see, when you come to a meeting like this, you need to bring your Bibles, you need to bring your notebook, you need to bring your pen. They say that the faintest ink is better than the best brain. So, take notes. Men and women of destiny, um, men and women who take notes. You don't just come to the house of God flying your hands, no Bible, no book, no. It means you are not interested in your destiny. Praise the Lord. Last week I told you that the next worst thing after hellfire is a bad marriage. And I said that the choice of a life partner is one of the most critical choice of your life. You should remember that one? And I said that outside your salvation experience, the other serious choice you are going to make is who to marry. And I made it clear that once you marry a deficit, you are finished. Once you marry a minus, you are finished. I made it very clear. And I said that there is no way an elephant can marry an ant. You don't put elephant and ant on the same bed. There will be serious confusion because the elephant leg cannot even find the ant. Let alone wanting to embrace the ant. And we looked at uh, the scripture that says, whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. And I said, the man should be finding the woman. Not the woman say, I prophesy, you are my husband. I see you in my dream. You are the one. You must marry me. In fact, Makasatayaba, you must marry me. No. That's wrong. And then we went into 15 wrong reasons for getting married. Do you, are you still following up to that point? Okay, for those of you who are here, what's number one reason? Wrong reason. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, accidental uh, pregnancy, thirteen, <laughs> fourteen, and fifteen. Those are wrong reasons for getting married. Then, last week too, I took you to the supermarket where husbands are sold. <laughs> so you can decide which one you want to buy. We said there are two kinds of husbands, the wicked one and the godly ones. We now went to the ten categories of the wicked husbands. We talk about the hard husband. The mini husband. Only bachelor husband. What's number four? Number five? Six? That is, that is all women. Follow me. That one. Seven? No romance, no kissing, nothing. Just business. Eight? Nah. And ten. Uh, under baby husband, there is a lot of things that follows this one. Then we now went to wicked wives. You can marry two kinds of wives, the wicked and the godly. What's number one wicked wife? 
missionary wife doesn't listen to anybody's opinion. Two, the Muhammad Ali and uh, three, four, or oh, one oh, wife. Five, uh, this the sophisticated wife. I didn't know that I shouldn't marry somebody who lives in motion. I grew up in VI all my life. <laughs> Sophisticated. Six. Doesn't clean anything. She's forgotten when last she had her bath. She doesn't know where the bedroom is. Sitting room is dirty. Underwears are stinking. And um, his children are unkept. Yes. Some of you are laughing now. But if, if I say, okay, everybody bring out your pants here now. Good. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And that was where we stopped. Amen. So I want to go on very quickly today before we now begin to lay the foundation of how to choose. It's good for you to have this foundational knowledge. So when you have this foundational knowledge, you are now able to choose properly. You are able to examine your heart and know what you really want. All some other foundations we have laid last week, I might refer to them again for the benefit of those who are just joining us now. But let me tell you something. If you are into a relationship now and you have not prayed and God has not spoken to you yet that that's the person to marry, break it off now. It's not too late. Because you cannot find a good, you cannot find your correct partner outside God. It's not possible. The devil is out there to make the wrong matches. And I want you to understand this. A sister came for prayer many years ago. And she said, please pray for me. I want to get married. Please pray for me. I want to get married. And we gave her some prayers. She started praying. After some time, she came back and said, ah, nobody is coming yet. Gave her another prayer. She started praying. She came back again. The Lord now said, I should tell her. I said, look, 13 men are going to come. The first 12, they are not your husband. Number 13 is your husband. But when you see the man, you may not like him. Because sometimes what you want is not what you need. Many people who are begging for husbands who will take them to the park, who will take them to Yankari Game Preserve, who will go to a film show, who will take them to a swimming pool. Many people are begging for those kind of husbands. Many who are begging for those kind of husbands, the husband they really need is somebody who will make them disciplined. So what you need is not sometimes what you want. And what you want is not what you need. So she started praying. And they were coming one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. When number seven or so came, she came and said, Jew, I think this is the one. Ah, everything I want in a man is in this one. I want this one. I said, no. They all went. I pray that any power that is bringing the wrong people your way shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We'll get to all that very, very soon. Because some people get married and sometimes they sit down and cry and say, how did I get myself into this? You got into it because that time you said, I love him. I love him. I couldn't do without him. Now you have him. Now you want to run away. There are ten types of marriages. We've talked about the kind of husbands, the kind of wives. Now let's talk about the kinds of marriages that are available. And then I will tell you the one to pick. 
There is what we call the neglected marriage. What did I say? Neglected marriage, the couples have no time to maintain the marriage. They are too busy. The man who woke up, woke up in the morning 5 a.m. is out to work. The woman who wakes up 5 a.m., they are out to work. By the time they come home, both of them are terribly tired. And they sleep off. No talking, no nothing. They neglected marriage. It will soon collapse. Two, actors and actresses. In this marriage, both of them are behaving as if things are right. Say, dear, darling, honey. In the public, they hold hands. And we say, what a lovely couple. <laughs> but in private, hey, it's fighting, cursing, and quarrel. We call them actors and uh, actresses. Those days, when I still used to pay pastoral visits about, I was driving along some, somewhere, and the Spirit of God said, why don't you visit the couple here? They are your members. It was many, many years ago, before Mountain of Fire started. So I, I went there. Ah, it was the woman who opened the door. She was very happy, but I noticed that the whole of her hair was wet on the face. Say, <laughs> so, ah, how are you, doctor? How are you? Hey, what brought you here today? Ah, darling, come and see. Man of God is here. We are blessed. We are blessed. Instead of her to tell me, say, sir, my husband has just finished holding my neck and putting my head on toilet bowl and was flushing it. Say, you brought your head, brought bad luck to this place. Let me flush the thing from your head. That was how, that was why her ear was wet. Instead of her to crowd, they acted. I said, thank man of God, I want a privilege to have you here. The actors and her actresses. Number three, intruder's marriage. Intruder. That is, a third party has taken over. Maybe friends, relations, strange woman or man, the home is being controlled by a third party. It's a terrible marriage indeed. Four, the shallow marriage, very shallow. That marriage is just based on physical attraction and bodily contour. Based on money, status, beauty, connection, tradition. We call them the shallow marriage. It has no basis. And immediately the woman gets fat a little bit. The man says, sorry, when I married you, you were not fat. Shed that weight now. If you don't shed it, get out now. I want a slim woman. I don't want a fat woman. You call it shallow. Very, very shallow. They're just there for connection purposes. Then number five, the broken marriage. The broken marriage. These ones, they just do what they want. The, the husband will be phoning strange woman in the sitting room and will be calling under that dear darling and the woman to ask her own boyfriend. So everybody's just doing their own thing themselves. It's already broken. They come to the house. Everybody go and prepare their food by themselves and they're just there. It's, it's already broken up to pieces. But they are, they are there. There are plenty of marriages like that. We call, they are also called marriages of convenience. So that people will not say, ah, upon all the noise we made, this is the result. That's why sometimes noisy marriages are not good. Sometimes. The, the, the noisiest marriage in the history of the world is the marriage of Princess, Princess Diana and Charles. Where is that marriage now? The whole world watched it on television. That marriage. Beautiful marriage. I don't, anybody watch that time? Fantastic music. But where is it now? The lady has been wasted. I pray that any marriage that wants to waste your life, you will not get into it. <laughs> Let your amen roar like thunder. The reason some women die early is because of bad marriage. 
bad marriage, when the woman is not happy, is not happy, dead, uh, beating her up every day, and she cannot live because of the children, then she develops high blood pressure. From high blood pressure to diabetes, diabetes to kidney failure, and everything, the woman is gone very quickly. Number six, you have the troubled marriage. The troubled marriage. Financial trouble, in law trouble, growing children trouble, problems all over the place in that marriage. There is no day to give testimony. It's problems. Troubled marriage. Seven, you have the wrong marriage. The marriage that is based on lies and stealing. Those are troubled marriages. It doesn't last. Number eight. Eight is inherited marriages. Inherited. Did somebody died? I said, well, your daughter is dead. Inherit the wife. Say yes, sir. And you inherited a woman your brother was married to for 15, 20 years. Now, marriages with bad foundation. What did I say? Marriages with bad foundation. Under that marriages with bad foundation, there are different categories. Number one, I'm still on number nine, but under that bad foundation, let me tell you what bad foundation is. Let me tell you what it means to lay a bad foundation for marriage. Sex before marriage is already a bad foundation. Once you begin to have sex before you marry a person, you have already laid a very bad foundation. And if you have not prayed about who to, whether you should marry somebody or not, and you are already sleeping with that person, the Lord will now blank you out. You won't see any information again from heaven because you have already broken the rule. The Bible says, let marriage be holy and bed remains undefiled. I'm not supposed to go to bed with anybody or sleep with anyone you are not married to. Once you do that one, you have you've laid a bad foundation for your marriage. If you are already married and you did it before you marry, both of you need deliverance and you need to go and do certain things to yourself. It can cause a lot of problems. A, a marriage with a bad foundation is a marriage to a satanic agent. If you marry a witch, a wizard, people, somebody with familiar spirits, and it's, it's, it's a marriage with a bad foundation. A brother met a lady in the bus, very beautiful lady, and they got talking on the way from Benin. And before they got to Lagos, they have decided to marry. The lady said, no problem. Come and see my mother tomorrow. Say, how about your father? Say, I don't have one. Now, for a reasonable person, you see somebody say, I don't have a father, I have a mother. What should you do? Flee. He didn't flee. The next day, he went. And she said, her mother lived in the forest. Do you love me? Say yes. Then you have to follow me. Said okay. Follow this lady into a thick forest. Then they got to a crossroad inside the forest. As they got to a crossroad inside the forest, three birds flew and landed on the head of the girl. And they flew back. And the girl said, that's my mother. My mother said, yes. That's how they got married. No dowry, no nothing. Three birds said, yes. By the time they brought this man to the headquarters, he was like HIV patient. He said, please help me, sir. Please, I said, what kind of marriage is this one that you did say? I don't know what went over me, but, but sir, I tell you, sir, this lady is beautiful. I tell you, sir, I tell you. (laughs) 
Since the day she married the lady, everything he was doing went down. He started getting lean, couldn't eat again. And uh, anytime, anytime he tried to sleep with the woman, somebody would come and give him serious beating on the bed. <laughs> bah, 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 blow. So, so in, in the, he stopped trying. And the day he was coming to Mountain of Fire, said the girl warned him that don't go to Mountain of Fire. You can go to this place. She mentioned several churches where you can go. Said, but don't go to that one. Don't go to Mountain of Fire. You can go to here. You can go here. You can go here. You can go here. But don't go to this particular. If you go to this one, when you come back here, you won't find anybody at home. He came. We prayed for him that day. By the time he got home, everything about the lady had disappeared. Up to now, nobody can locate her. You see, there are many strange things. You can be married to satanic agents, get into trouble, and you don't know. Some of these things may look like fairy tales or superstition, but they're true. It's we who see them. True. A lady from a holiness preaching church, they preach holiness day and night, got married. The day of the wedding, when they got home, the man switched off the light in the room and said, I want to transform. And she said, before her eyes, the man began to balloon. Began to grow, began to grow. So I said, ah. See, it was still the same face, but it was now growing bigger, bigger, until it was, his head was almost touching the ceiling. He said, this is my true person. I said, ah. And you are, you are an usher in our church? You say, yes. Say, so She started crying. Crying not because she felt that the gorilla of the man would kill her. But she was crying when she saw the size of, you know? <laughs> Understand? Amen. Amen. Right from the first night, beloved, she needed surgery. <laughs> surgery. It was then the brother. That was one case. We see them every day. Married, married to satanic agents. Sometimes it is not good to be too handsome. Sometimes it's not good to be too beautiful. <laughs> you could get into trouble very quickly. People could do all kinds of things to get you. And you will have gone before you know you are gone. That time everybody will talk. The person will not hear. Nah, no, I must go. Ah, No, no, no. That's what happens. In another case, this one, if I, this one about three years ago, they got married too. But every day, the woman will look at the man and say, hey, are you calling yourself a prayer warrior? The man was a prayer warrior in his church. This is not Martin of Fire. You know, Martin of Fire has been converted to, to uh, a specialist hospital. <laughs> specialist hospital. I said, go there. Those are the people who can deal with this. I say, hey, are you call yourself a prayer warrior? And the man did not understand. Are you call yourself a prayer warrior? So one day at night, the lady locked the door, threw the key under the bed and became a large snake. And she was crawling towards the man on bed. The man said, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. He was jumping on top of the bed. He said, hey. Blood of Jesus. Sister, sister, sister. Ah, Blood of Jesus. Then she changed back. And said, This is why I've been telling you every day, and you call yourself a prayer warrior. So I, I just wanted to show you my true self. So now take me to Mountain of Fire for deliverance. That's why they brought the lady to my office. Life, life, life. 
So that's why, when I saw these young, young boys, they said, I want to become general of I said, you want to become general of Go to psychiatric hospital, let them check your head. That is correct, what you are saying. So we started praying for her. Blah, blah, blah. I anointed her. I prayed and she calmed down. The serpent thing got out. When, she, when the lady was now sitting there, the man said, uh, Jill, um, uh, sorry. I, I, I will not be able to go home with her. Uh, I will not be able to. So, so can you please arrange to keep her somewhere around here? Ah. I said, Mr. Man, when she was possessed of the serpent, you were sleeping with her. Is, is it now that she's free, you want to run away? Take your wife, I beg you. <laughs> Marriage to satanic agent. When your marriage is based on accidental pregnancy, it's also a bad foundation. I know a girl who came from a very strict family. In that family, every month, all the girls must come and show daddy their menstrual pad. Every month. They were that strict. But then, this girl was already pregnant. They did not know. Because she went and bought watercolor. Paint. And was using red ink to paint the pad every month. And was showing them just red ink. That formed the basis of a marriage. The marriage has broken down many years ago. Marriage as a result of demonic consultation. That one too is a bad foundation. This, your daddy and your mommy, they went to the native doctor and said, well, our daughter has brought three names, four names. Which one? And native doctor begins to divine on name number one, name number two, name number three. You consulted the devil for marriage. It's a bad foundation. So if you are here at the youth church and you still have parents who go about to consult, you better pray hard. Because you could be here praying prayers, but they are mentioning your name at one altar. Idol somewhere. Your name may be as far away as India now. You are here. <laughs> there could be an old man in your village now going to the idol every morning and say, well, I'm bringing this sacrifice on behalf of my granddaughters who are in Lagos. But you don't know anything about it, but they are doing it on your behalf. I pray at any remote controlling power working against the life of anyone here will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. So, sex before marriage, bad foundation. Married to satanic agent, bad foundation. Married due to accidental pregnancy, bad foundation. Marriage as a result of demonic consultation, bad foundation. Then forced marriages. You're forced into it. So you must marry so so and so. We have been family friends. You must marry them. Is 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 a bad foundation. Child marriages. Child marriages. You know, in some places in this country, at the age of eight, nine, you are given off in marriage. Eight, nine. One baba has already covenanted to marry you. So the Baba will send you throughout school from age of eight, already married. Right? It's a bad foundation. Marriage is based on physical attraction alone. It's bad foundation. Marriage is based on demonic prophecy. Somebody said, don't say the Lord. And the Lord didn't say anything. It's a bad foundation. Marriages that, that are polygamous in nature. It's a bad foundation. Marriages by trial and error. Bad foundation. Marriages with blood covenants. Bad foundation. You may not understand the blood covenant one, but maybe you had a boyfriend before, and because he didn't want you to leave, say, bring your finger. He cut your finger with knife, took your blood, suck it. Then he cut his hands, you to suck it, say, hey, today we are joined together. Nobody can separate. <laughs> but now he's gone. Is a bad foundation. So you have the neglected marriage, 
the actor and actresses, the intruder, the shallow marriage, the broken marriage, the troubled marriage, the wrong marriage, the inherited marriage, the marriages with bad foundation, and then number 10 is the growing marriage. Growing marriage. Only few women are enjoying this kind of growing marriage. It's not perfect, but it's growing. And both of them are committed to God. They are committed to Jesus. And they are doing all kinds of things to make the marriage work. That's the kind of marriage you should come for. The growing one. The godly one. The ordained one. The one designed from heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to make a few statements about choosing your life partner, which I want you to write down and go and study it when you get to. Before we now go into technicalities, let me make those statements so that you can put them down. Number one, marriage was created by God. Therefore, instructions for godly marriage must come from God. Marriage was created by God. Therefore, instructions for godly marriage must come from God. What did I say just now? I want you to say it to me so that I will make sure you get it. What did I say? Who created marriage? No. Who has the power to instruct you to marry? No. God. So since he's the one that created it, he is the one who took a bone out of your rib in the beginning and created your partner. So he is the only one who can guide you aright. Marriage was created by God. Therefore, instructions for godly marriage must come from God. Note that that's fact number one which you must note. Fact number two. Decision on marriage must not come from the flesh. Decisions on marriage must not come from the flesh. Because the flesh is a deceiver. The flesh is an enemy in our camp. The Bible says the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. The kind of woman your flesh wants may be the wrong one for you. The kind of man Mr. Flesh is saying you should go after may be the completely wrong one for you. It may be like that sister who for me, Dr. Luca, pray for me to find the husband, but when you are doing the prayer tell God that I don't want a man with tribal marks. But if that is what God has given to her from the beginning, she has just shut herself out of the will of God. What has tribal man got to do with the person you want to marry? I'll go back again. What is fact number one? What's number two? Number three, marriage is not for boys and girls. It's not for boys and girls. You are a mad person. When in the secondary school, you are talking about marriage. I mean, you are crazy. JSS 1, JSS 2, JSS 3, marriage. It's, 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 it's madness. Crazy girls and crazy boys. It's not for boys and girls. Therefore, shall a man leave his mother for his mother and cleave unto his wife. A man and a woman. It's not boy and girl. A man and a woman. Four. Before thinking about marriage, you must be physically matured, materially matured, 
I'm spiritually matured. Before thinking about marriage, you must be physically matured, materially matured, and spiritually matured. What did I say just now? <laughs> physically matured. For a man, that is from the age of 21. From a, for a woman, from the age of 18. If it's physical maturity, most people are qualified. But then it's not the only qualification. Marriage is not big breast. No. You may be physically matured, but you may not be materially matured. When you don't have any meal ticket in your hand, you should first of all get that meal ticket in your hand. Make sure you have something you can feed yourself with before you bring in a second mouth. God, there is no way an hungry man can feed a hungry wife. That's the truth. Why do you think the marriage committee in the church visits people's houses when they want to get married? If you say you want to get married and the marriage committee will come and see your room, whether you have a house you are even living in, or you, just, you are just sleeping on a mat by your uncle's bed. They come. And some people have even tried to deceive our marriage committee. They will take them to the wrong flat. A flat that does not belong to them. That belongs to some people, some other people. But our married committee too has found a way of beating it. Because immediately they enter by the door and say, excuse me, does this man live here? <laughs> this man, do you have this place? How long has he been living here? Show us something personal in this room. <laughs> when you say it's your house and you don't have a picture, your certificates are not there. I say, sorry, it's not your house. You must be materially matured. Only mad women go into marriage without having something they can do in their hands. Because nobody is praying for anything bad to happen. You could get to that place and they will call you a liability. But you are just here to eat. You don't contribute anything. You don't contribute nothing. Useless woman. Then you must be spiritually matured. By spiritual maturity, you must have gotten to a level where you know how to pray and hear God speak. This is where the problem lies. How to pray and hear God speak. Many people are not matured to the level of hearing the voice of God. They can hear the voice of CNN. They can hear the voice of their friends. They can stay for 10 hours on the phone they can text messages that can scatter everything but they can't hear from God if on the issue of marriage you do 3 days dry fast it's worth it if you do 7 days dry it's worth it until you hear from God do you know why you need to hear from God nobody is praying for problems but if you if by chance you run into trouble in that marriage you can go back to God I say, Father, <laughs> you asked me to marry this person. So you have to solve this problem. But if he didn't ask you to go there and there is a problem, you come back to God and say, Father, help me. He say, did I ask you to go? <laughs> Who sent you there? I sent you to Nineveh. You went to Tashish. <laughs> you must be physically matured, materially matured, spiritually matured. Spiritual maturity, you must get to a level where you can hear God speak the way I'm talking to you. And don't come and say, say uh, I dreamt, I dreamt, I dreamt. Are you going to get married in the dream? No, I, I, it's not a question of I dreamt. I dreamt. If you're a prophet and they take you to the hospital to go and pray for a woman who is in labor, uh, you say, ah, sorry, the only way I hear from God is my dream. And now I said, please, uh, let me sleep. <laughs> when the woman is in labor, let me sleep so that God can talk to me. No. No way. 
So, what's the first fact? Two. Three. Four. So if you are here now and you don't have a clear method of hearing from God first, my recommendation and advice you, first of all, go and sort that one out. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Learn how to hear from God. Once, once you begin to hear from God, your progress begins. Even as a believer, the day you begin to hear God, oh, your progress begins. But when you can't hear God, you are a bat. So you need to pray the bad spirit out of your life. You need to hear God so that you can know, say, Father, is it this one? Father, is it that one? You must be able to have a yes or no answer. And don't say, I have peace. I have peace in my heart that he is the one. There is something called evil peace. <laughs> you have peace on the wrong thing. Fact number five. It is an abomination for a believer to befriend or marry an unbeliever. It's an abomination for a believer to befriend or marry an unbeliever. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Second Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what path hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. So there is, no, there is no connection between light and darkness. You can't marry an unbeliever and say I will convert him. It's not possible. Because you have not even succeeded in converting yourself. And note this especially. And I want you to ring into your spirit. Without any apologies, and we do respect to anyone here, any man that is demanding sex before marriage is an unbeliever. That's that's I don't want to care what church is going to. It could be double apostolic church, it could be double deeper life, it could be double winners, double redeem, double mountain of fire. If he's asking for sex before marriage, he is not born again. Whether he's speaking in tongues or not does not matter. After all, the mass courage of our village, they speak in tongues. <laughs> Anybody, it's a sure sign that the person is not born again. When you come across a man who wants to marry you, it is easy to know a man who loves the Lord. It's easy to know the man who is very worldly. When you see a man who says he wants to marry you, and any time you go there, you don't hear, let's share the word of God. You don't hear, what did they preach about yesterday in your fellowship? You don't hear, what did you do during your quiet time? All, you, all he wants to do is to rub his hand all over you and kiss every part of your body. That's, that's, his, that's his ceremony any time you get there. You, you get there with your clothes well ironed. By the time you leave his place, everything is rough. then you are just planning to marry a child of the devil. And you don't, you don't, you don't fall to pressure. Say, I don't like this. Uh, anytime I come here, we just talk and talk and talk. Uh, how do I know that you are not impotent? I say, but, but the Bible says, the Bible says, ah, no, let me confirm. I want to confirm. 
that you are not important. Any sister that is telling a brother that one, she is not born again. You want to check out impotency? You are not born again. Fact number six. Destiny must come before partner. Can you shout that loud and clear? Mm. I want you to roar like thunder as you say it. Aha. First of all, discover your destiny before you begin to pray about a wife or a husband. Purpose before partner. Destiny before partner. Your destiny is what your mission here on earth. Your destiny is what God has written in the book concerning you before you were born. Your destiny is your assignment in this world. Your destiny is the purpose for which God created you. Your destiny is what heavens have decided, determined, ordained you to become when you come to this earth. So find that out first, quickly, before you begin to look for a partner. If not, you go and marry a partner who will be a deficit to your destiny and will not be able to fulfill that destiny. You, you could marry a destiny killer. And then, immediately you marry the person, everything about your life just goes down. Because you did not marry somebody who will make your destiny come to pass. You come to some, you marry to somebody who will destroy that destiny. Seven. Marriage is a lifetime contract. Therefore, don't rush. Marriage is a lifetime contract. Therefore, do not rush. Many have rushed inside and they rush out like fire. So that means you must prepare. What you do not prepare for cannot give you the best. Marriage it's a lifetime contract. It's not a short thing. It's not boyfriend and girlfriend. It's don't rush into that kind of thing. And it's not a good thing when at the age of 30, like we're seeing this day, 30, 25, 26, you hear, I'm divorced. I'm divorced. Ha. 26, you are divorced. 30, you are divorced. What will happen to you when you're 60? You're divorced. Point number eight. The devil battles against establishment of godly marriages. The devil battles against establishment of godly marriages. This is why marriage, praying about it, is very important and why some Christians are having problems. The enemy doesn't want a good match. The enemy wants wrong, wrong matches. Wrong, wrong matches. I say, battle on and I pray that even if you have come from a family where marriages do not work your own will be a success in the name of Jesus what is that point number 8 it doesn't want godly marriages at all the other time witches in South Africa they gather themselves together they fasted for 201 days against Christian marriages the Christians there didn't take it seriously. They thought it was a joke. But then Christian marriages began to break down one by one, one by one, one by one, in, including the marriage of the man with the largest church there. Broke down. The man went and married a friend of his wife. Yes. Pastor with the largest church there. Because when, did those, when those witchcraft people were doing their fasting, we were eating and drinking and we were doing love feasts. It is we sometimes that we don't understand what we are doing. The enemy is carefully organized and he knows what he's doing. For example, now, the enemy knows those of us who get angry, so he will bring somebody to annoy you. He knows those who like food. Somebody will be bringing you food regularly. He knows those who like money. Knows those. Number nine. There are ancestral and demonic roadblocks to marriage. There are ancestral 
and demonic roadblocks to marriage. What did I say just now? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I know a pastor in, in this Lagos who speaks like an American. American, yeah. And there's a girl that goes to that American church. And she, she, she had broken engagements 13 times. So her mother now grabbed her and took her to the American pastor. So this girl comes to your church. She's broken engagement 13 times. What, what are you doing as a pastor? I said, ma'am, what did you just say? So I said, she's a good man broke 13 times. I said, wow, if that is the situation, take her to the mountain of fire. <laughs> Thank God for that man. The man knew what to do. Take her, take her. We, don't, we can't deal with this here. Take her to the mountain of fire. Very popular pastor in this Lagos. There are ancestral and demonic roadblocks to the marriage of some people. The enemy will just decide that no, 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 this one is not going. The person will not be able to identify God's will in marriage. The person will just be meeting the wrong, wrong people. The person will just meet unserious people. Some you will meet married men who are already polygamous. Some you will meet those who are complete children of the devil. They, they are the ones who will show interest. Then you know there is a roadblock somewhere roadblock somewhere, an ancestral roadblock somewhere. A man was on his way to work one morning and somebody attacked him. He was a madman, so they started fighting. Eventually, he overpowered the madman, threw the madman into the river and the madman was found floating in the river the next day. Nobody knew who killed the madman. But then, the offspring of this man any time they were planning marriages, they run mad. They run mad. In fact, I pray that I will not see that kind of thing again. The first time I saw it, they, they, were, they were dancing like this. They danced, after, after the wedding, they danced out into where people would take their pictures. All of a sudden, the bride threw away the flower, threw away the Bible, put hand on her wedding gown, pia, tore it to pieces. Unfortunately, I don't know anything then. I, if, didn't, if I knew one quarter of what I knew then, I would step in. I said, no, you can't, you can't, you can't run my dear. But we didn't know. Nobody teaches us those things. Don't know anything. But due to those, those essential powers, I swore against her. Number 10. It is dangerous to give your body to a man before you are married to him. It is dangerous to give your body to a man before you are married to him. Those are principles. Principles. And there are some sisters. They will have married easily without any problem if they had just retained their virginity. Just retain it. We will have married easily. The day they allowed the virginity to be broken, the enemy put a material in that womb. So anytime they see a man and to keep the man from going away, they sleep with the man, the man sleeps with you and runs away. Sleeps with you and runs away. Then you then become a ludo game called peck and go. Because you were too loose. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now we've laid a very good foundation for this choosing your life partner. Next time when I come here, that we're not going to deal with how you now choose, how you know who is who, what exactly should be done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Meanwhile, let's rise up on our feet now. Because our time is gone. We'll continue next time. Don't worry. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet now. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. And let there be silence. 
Very soon, I'm going to take some altar calls here. I want to plead with you, don't deceive yourself when that time comes. Because the power of God is going to move here to break certain bondages. So don't, when the time comes, if it concerns you, when I say come out, don't, don't waste time. Come out for the prayers. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here today, Jesus is the only one who can guide you aright. Jesus is the only one who can be your pilot in this wicked world. If you are here in this meeting, you say, yes, I, I want to know that Jesus. I too want to be able to take decisions for my life. Whatever you are, while all lies are close, just raise up your right hand. Say, I want to surrender my life to Jesus today. Just raise up your right hand. Those who have raised up your right hand, take a bold step of faith. Just come quickly to me at your time. Just come out here. Today, I see me me to me. Me. You want to guide me. Just leave your seat and come to You take the whole world and give me Jesus. You take the whole world and give me Jesus. You take the whole world and give me Jesus no turning back there is no turning back I have decided, I have decided to follow with Jesus. Jesus I have decided to say just to follow I have decided to to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. For on the way to Calvary, he went for me. For me, Jesus went for me, and no way to carry He went for me, and He died to set me You've taken the most important decision in life. Just close your eyes, burn down your head, say what I'm